China slammed the U.S. for trying to coerce Beijing during a call between the country's leaders on Friday. The U.S. had warned China not to provide material support to Russia over the conflict in Ukraine. But China issued a swift and cutting response. As the culprit of the Ukraine crisis, why does the U.S. keep smearing China instead of reflecting on the security predicament in Europe caused by the eastward expansion of U.S.-led NATO? Why doesn't the U.S. reflect on its hypocritical move of watching the fire from across the river after fanning the flames? The least thing the U.S. should do is to sling mud at China, which is not a party directly concerned. The despicable move of the U.S. only serves to reveal its guilty conscience and true intention to shift the blame and profit from the Ukraine crisis. Recent weeks have seen both politicians and the media shift their gaze eastwards to China. For some, this has been a wake-up call, a turning point. The West realizes it needs to act now to contain an assertive Beijing, and things have become heated. The U.S. has been spreading successive disinformation targeting China on the Ukraine issue with malicious intentions. Well, China's already on the wrong side of history when it comes to, uh, to Ukraine and the aggression being committed by Russia. The U.S. has gone so far as to threaten that other countries will pay a price for not following suit and imposing sanctions as it has done. One country orders a luxury meal and the rest of the world has to foot the bill? This looks more like what a bully would do. We will not stand by and allow any country uh, to compensate Russia for its losses would, from the economic would you, sanctions. Would you, would you, would Never forget that there are three fingers pointing back to you when you point fingers at others. But it's not just words and saber rattling. The U.S. is playing with fire in a very sensitive region, Taiwan and the Indo-Pacific. Washington has deployed more than 2,000 troops to Australia's Northern Territory for the first time ever, is building a missile network aimed at deterring China, has sailed a warship through the Taiwan Strait and approved $100 million in arms sales to Taiwan. Beijing isn't pleased. We warn the U.S. that playing the Taiwan card is like playing with fire, which will not only push Taiwan into a dangerous situation, but also bring unbearable consequences to the U.S. side. U.S. ally Australia is also upping the ante on Taiwan and on building nuclear submarines. Japan's arms imports have increased two and a half times over the past five years, with South Korea also noticeably increasing its military budget. You can guess who's supplying them. The USA remains the largest supplier to Asia and Oceania, as arms exports are an important element of U.S. foreign policy aimed at China. And that's not all. A U.S. firm just bought a shipyard in the Philippines. Might not look like much, just a bankrupt junkyard. Well, not quite. The location provides direct access to the South China Sea, the main area of China-Taiwan tensions. A message to Beijing that we're here to stay. And then there's the firm who bought it. The co-founder, Steve Feinberg, is a Washington insider, having run companies with close ties to the U.S. military. He also apparently has a very keen interest in China. Little surprise, it's his firm that bought the shipyard. America's Five Eyes partner, Australia, is also very much on board the sanction China plan, with the country's militaries having a few recent brushes. It's also splashing some serious cash to try and stop China's dominance of the minerals market. China currently dominates around 70 to 80 percent of global critical minerals production and continues to consolidate its hold over these supply chains. This initiative is designed to address that dominance. But Beijing won't be bullied and holds many cards. The recent lockdown in just one city has got the world into a supply chain panic. China's an opponent that many can't, quite literally, afford to have.